In this tutorial, I'm not only going to show you how to make highly detailed ivy, but we are going to grow it procedurally on any surface using, you guessed it, uh, geo and simulation nodes. Later in this video, I'm going to tell you about a new scanner, which will let us scan in an object, and we'll get to that. But for now, let's talk over the basic theory so that we can then grow it on surfaces. I'm going to start off by taking everything and deleting it and replacing it with a curve because I want to define my ivy, kind of like the general pattern of growth, with kind of like a direction. I'm going to use this draw tool go like that. Take this into geometry nodes. There's only 10 control points here, which seems to be accurate. I want there to be many, many, many more. So I'm going to resample curve by, let's say, 100. On every single frame, there will be a chance that I'm going to grow a line. And from this thing, I'm going to grow a line, and it can be a random direction. Take a point, ask, am I going to grow ivy? And if so, start growing ivy. We can do this with a simple extrude mesh. We are going to extrude on vertices, which by default is not going to work because we're using a curve type. So I'm going to do a curve to mesh. Of course, we want these directions to be more more creepy and curvy and stuff like that. A good way to do that is if I imagine this point, it has a tangent vector that points this way. Basically, what that means is it has a direction that goes along the curve. That tangent vector is here, tangent vector is here. It's the one that hugs and goes tangent. It touches the surface perfectly. And then just kind of offset it by some little random amount, and that will look more guided. I'm going to call that attribute our direction, and that direction initially at least is going to be the curve tangent. Notice that I put this before the curve to mesh. Tangents will only exist in the curve state. Now what we can do is just bring in our parameter, connect this to the offset. Each uh, vine is kind of growing tangent to it. In fact, what I want to do is I want to incrementally grow this on every single frame, which is why I'm going to use a simulation zone. And what are we doing every single frame? We're going to extrude. So just like before, I'm going to extrude a vertex using our tangent direction. If I go frame by frame by frame, it is growing, but it might not be visible here. Uh, we have 1.6 million vertices. If, for example, we have a vertex here and we extruded it a little, on the next iteration, we are going to extrude that one a little, but also, again, we're kind of reusing this vertex. So now there are two on this. And what I'm saying is we're redoing things we've already done. Take the top of this extrusion, which is to say the endpoint, and connect that into the selection, making sure it's enabled. Initially, we're going to say extrude everything, but then we are going to isolate the endpoint that's going to feed back into there. So in theory, this should look exactly the same, but now we only have 2,000 vertices. We can then overwrite our direction equal to itself, but this time I'm going to add kind of a random offset. And there's two ways to do that. I'm going to show you the simple way and then the better looking way that generalizes more nicely. We are going to add just a random vector between negative one and one. Actually, I guess the Z axis is suppressed in this case. We're on the X, Y plane. And for the seed, I'm going to randomize it on every single frame. Already looking a bit better. What you're going to see is if I play this, it's going to keep growing forever. What we should do is at every extrusion, at every step, there should be some percent chance. So let's say a 50% chance that it stops. I'm going to take my selection. I'm going to multiply it by a random value. But this one is going to be a Boolean. So by default, it will be 50%. It will look like this. Why did it barely grow? Because it's not very likely that a branch will become long if every single time there's a 50% chance it will stop. If I make it 75%, and in fact, we can push this as high as 90% to get kind of further reaching results that it will eventually terminate. Of course, these seem to go a bit, you know, way too long. And we can fix that by saying our offset should be less to begin with. So now we have something that's a bit more controlled, but better than just kind of a smaller number is a smaller and randomized number frame for the seed over here. So let's go between zero and 0.1. And that's looking pretty good, except for the uh, two branches that kind of you know, go forever. Well, doing it like this isn't really the way because we're just adding a random thing every single time. There's no smoothness to it. And statistically, if we're adding negatives and positives and all this, it will kind of average out to add zero contribution, which is how you get it going in like a, a certain direction. We can actually rotate it. We are going to use a vector rotate as God intended. Initially, imagine we have a vertex. It grows in this direction. What I can say is on the next iteration, instead of growing exactly the same way, I'll have it just go a tiny bit to the side defined by this angle right here. That could have also been going this other way. Kind of detour. It can kind of swerve. We are basically rotating our direction vector about the Z axis, which means that this is basically set up and all we have to do is randomize our angle. I'm going to change the seed over the frame. Let's go from negative one to one so it can go in either direction. Let's see what that looks like. So let's see if I multiply this by three, 
now it gets even swirlier. I'm going to multiply it by 0.5, so it's half as strong. And since we have it more contained now, I feel comfortable pushing this probability even higher, which means it can keep growing for longer. And you might be thinking, this isn't too much detail. Remember, everything we're doing is dependent on our resample curve. So let me just bump it up by 400. And now we kind of get the same thing, but it's like stupid detailed. You could even go up to a thousand. This simulates actually quite quickly. Our initial curve, this one that spawns everything, is composed of many, many, many points. I'd like to take every other vertex maybe and just kind of skip it. I can store a integer, that integer being the index, index 23. The next one is going to be 24 and then 25 and so on. We can just kind of keep the even numbers. This kind of selection function says whether or not we extrude. I'm just going to multiply it by, shouldn't be called direction, let's call it original index and calculate it modulo two zero if it's even one if it's odd so now it will be hard to tell unless I do a before and after, but this is much more spaced. So let me just kind of add a section here. I replay it and now it simulates Take kind of like a strange curve. Like imagine that Ivy is spawned off of a circle. Uh, we can take that. I'm actually going to bring it back to a curve. So if I trim curve, you're going to notice it kind of grows from the center outwards. I'm going to, weirdly enough, convert it back into a mesh using a circle profile. We're not going to have the radius be this big, right? Like we're going to shrink it. I want it to be based on a certain function, right? Set curve radius, which will basically be a multiplier. I'm going to take the spline parameter, which is exactly what tells us how far along the curve are we. Connect this here, maybe lower the radius. But you can see it starts off right here. And then as it goes along, it's going to get thicker. Invert this by one to zero to zero to one. So look at that urge by distance while it's still a mesh. So this is before and after. You can see the number of vertices changes over here. Let me bump the offset scale so that it can go way higher, larger distribution. And look at that. You might wonder, how do we take this and apply it to a surface, right? Like an ancient ruin stairway or statue or something? Well, before we get to that, we need that 3D object on which we are going to grow on. And I thought that would be a perfect segue to the sponsor of this video, Creality, which one of the things they do is make scanners and we'll talk about it and also kind of make it part of the tutorial. So at this point, we've already done this. We've unboxed Creality scanners. While I do this, by the way, this is the CR Scan Otter. Okay, there we go. We've seen this kind of packaging before, but this is the newer model. Oh, it comes with a nice mat and a tracking surface, which is actually new. I don't think I've ever gotten this before. Calibration board. Don't need that, don't need that. Oh, they sent, look at that. <laughs> I did not know. Okay, so I think we know what we're gonna scan and I guess grow Ivy on. Okay, this looks much more high tech than the one I have. So that is the gist of it. I think the cool part is gonna be actually doing something with it. So in theory, at least I should have everything I need. And our goal is to scan this owl and grow Ivy all over it. Just a disgusting amount of Ivy. Okay, so next, install. This is exciting stuff. Meanwhile, the scanner I have attached to a USB 3.0 socket, right? You wanna make sure it's USB 3 or you gotta like power it. Green is good. Scanner firmware, also good. So let's see what they want from me. Do they want calibration? It is an option, so let's calibrate. Okay, they're saying to rotate it in this orientation. Okay. Tilt to the left, tilt forward, tilt to the right. The learning curve is steep. It is. Let's scan. Okay, so this time I'm going to swap everything. There's a uh, play and pause button. You play, you scan, you pause, you rotate. It is a normal scan. It is small. I think I also want to get the texture. We'll, we'll see. You get the depth camera and you get the RGB camera. And the distance is, you know, kind of like that. And you just want to get it to what they call the optimal distance. Click play. So I'm just gonna get up close, pause, rotate it. And it seems like the thing actually lights up depending on the distance, if you can see that. Rotate, play. Honestly, I think I got it. Complete scan, which I think you could have also like held the button for three seconds, but. So this is just kind of like the low res uh, point cloud that it's going to refine. And of course I'm gonna delete all the uh, floaties. I guess you can pick some settings. I do not know what I'm doing. We'll see how my first scan turns out. That will be kind of an omen for things to come. Honestly, not too bad for a first attempt. I do want to take a second whack at it. Owl second attempt. Okay, so I think at this point, this is clearly significantly better. So I'm actually going to call it quits right here. Yeah, look, at that's just like a sparse point cloud. Okay, I got the hang of it. This is an actually good model. 
There we go. Don't go with your first attempt. My first attempt was shit. We also have a loose color uh, map, which I'm not huge on. I'm sure you could throw more compute at this. This is just kind of like an initial pass. So we are going to export. I'm going to do OBJ. By the way, if you didn't know, you can just take an OBJ, click and drag, and now it imports. I'm just going to do basic cleanup. Origin to geometry is going to let me recenter this, realign it. And the cleanup is actually very simple, right? Get rid of this section, maybe clean up some of the ground over here. Hit L. This is going to select the entire map. Actually, that should be it. Control I to invert, delete uh, vertices. And that might have been the only cleanup we needed to do. I'm going to reorient it so it's sitting on the ground. And for the ivy thing, this is just going to be a proxy. I'm going to duplicate this mesh. I'm going to decimate it. This is so it has less geometry. This isn't for what we see, but rather this is for simulating. So we're not dealing with half a million polygons. So just do a ratio of like 0.1. We don't lose much quality. And again, we just want the normals to be accurate. So I'm going to apply this decimate and then we can actually do another one until it starts losing its form. So let's do another. And now that we have that, we can talk about how to take our ivy and now grow it on a surface. The first thing we need to do is this curve that we've created needs to be on the surface of the mesh. So I'm going to delete everything. Make sure you have this draw tool selected because it has this surface feature, which as you might guess, lets you draw on the surface of a mesh. Go in the crotch, as it were. If I click play, we now have ivy growing. Make it so that it grows on the surface and doesn't go outward. Maybe a little. So back to geometry nodes. I definitely want this to grow further. Okay, so now it's growing kind of to a size that I like. So as you would expect, the main thing that differentiates this and what we need to fix is this ivy needs to stick onto this uh, surface. So you can imagine that the ivy maybe grows this way and then that way. All we need to do is calculate the nearest surface point and then map it to that, which will set up the next iteration to kind of be on the surface, etc. At the very end of this chain, I'm going to map it onto the surface. So set position, find the nearest surface. For the mesh, what do I want to snap to? I'm going to choose our low res owl set to relative. I want to say, look at the nearest surface point and we want to extract the vector of its position. In other words, I want to know what is the position of the nearest uh, point. Move it there before and after. So you can already see kind of the idea here. And because this is inside our simulation zone, it's going to do it on every frame such that the ivy now grows on it. We should probably bump up our radius. So let's see. And in fact, we can actually hide the low res mesh and now bring in our high res mesh, which I guess we need to put in the same location. But now you can see we have the illusion of our IV growing on the high res, which of course it isn't. And to get a bit better where it doesn't go inside the surface, because we have some wasted detail, map to the near surface point and then just go a tiny bit outwards. And we can do this actually at the end of our calculations. I'm going to offset the position basically by the same function. I want to know what is the face normal. The reason for this is the normal of a surface points outwards, which means that we can gently push it outwards so that none of it's on the interior. I'm going to put this into the offset. You can see it's now kind of floating above the surface. Scale that back in. And now that we have kind of like a big you know, model going on here. I do want to find the settings that I like. So first of all, it should grow way further than it does. And second of all, I would like it if there are way more ivy growing on this. So let's bump it up by two and let's see what this gives us. Nice. I can also say maybe grow some here and maybe a lot on the base and it wraps around the foot. Unlike before when we were on the XY plane and some of the ivy could just kind of go off into the background. Now it has to remain on our surface, which will mean it will cover it much better. Look at that. We have our model completely, completely covered in ivy. Let me show you a trick to actually clean this up. What we can do is kind of add a smoothing function, a little extra geometry that will soften the curves. How do I want to do this? Well, this is an operation that, again, is easier as a curve. So we're going mesh to curve to curve to mesh. Run a fillet curve, which is going to explode everything. But if you set this to poly and then limit radius, it's going to be more self-contained. And then when I add the count, this is before and this is after. It just kind of smooths the angles, very angular and after it is much smoother. Now look at it, okay? So this is before the ivy, after the ivy. It's like overgrown and like taken over this thing. In fact, ivy should probably be some kind of like darker brown or maybe green since it is a plant because this is geometry nodes. You do unfortunately, or maybe it's a good thing, have to apply the material inside the node network. So I'm gonna set material to our ivy. I'm gonna go for kind of a greenish yellow that's much darker, maybe bring down the saturation a little. So we can actually also animate this thing growing. That is an ivy simulation if you ever 
uh, needed that. There you go. That's how I do IV simulation. And specifically, we did it on this model, which we scanned thanks to the Creality Otter scanner. Here in these images, you can see all the specs. There's too many to go over. Kind of the precision, like to what fraction of a millimeter or whatever. Can it create geometry? How precise it is? How good are the depth and camera sensors? How heavy is it? How expensive is it? And by the way, there will be a link in the description for where you can buy it. Because again, this is a sponsored video, but luckily I think the two kind of melded together in a way that makes sense. So that's it.